Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> 107.7, The Island. Mornings at 5.30 and 10 o'clock. Okay, uh... Three, two, one. This is the Hand Crows Podcast. I'm Josh. I'm Smamps. And I'm Dreard, or Pooser. <clears throat> so, today, we have with us a French copy of Donkey Konga. Can you tell us about that? Uh, so, it was... <laughs> Uh, so, it was a game I played when I was a, a kid. It's on the GameCube. Um, and I never noticed it was French, because I haven't looked at it. Uh, I used to try and play Happy Birthday on it, um, because that was one of the song levels. You got multiple characters, Donkey Kong, Diddy Kong, and Cranky Kong. This, this sounds amazing. Yeah, yeah. Multiple characters and Happy Birthday? Yeah, game. dream come true. And it has four and two player modes. Four and two. Well, not three. Well, I don't know. I've never tried three. <laughs> anyway, so you may be questioning, this is Guample Fomp. Why the fuck is there a podcast on it? Well, I mean, here's the deal. It's, it's Guample Fomp. So why are you We do whatever questions? the hell we want. Yeah. Why not a podcast? So uh, you might also be asking, why is there this guy, like this this Josh guy? I've never fucking heard of him. Well, get over it, bitch. I just established <laughs> that we do whatever we want. I'm here now. <laughs> That's from a very good movie. Uh, it, it's it's called I Am Here Now. It's what? by Neil Breen. Oh, it's okay. amazing. It's like I am here. Dot, 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 now. So there's like a big long pause. We, we need to watch that sometime. But but anyway, so hand crows. Basically, uh, you boys are going to ask us the questions and we'll answer them. And you can just ask those in the comments or send us a text if you have our number. Or call in right now. Yes, or call in right now. Call in at a... Uh... 420-6969. There's no area code. Oh. But, uh... <laughs> if, if you call within the next 10 minutes, you get absolutely nothing. But, you know, we will talk to you, or try. That, yeah. That should be considered a reward in itself. So, um, anyway, uh, trying to think. Oh, yeah. Uh, sometimes we're also going to have some guests today. We have a guest, uh, and we also have a sponsor or they're not really sponsoring us. It's more, we're sponsoring them and they don't even know it, but Josh, would you like to tell them who the sponsor is? Absolutely. I would. Today's episode of Hand Crows is sponsored by Black 3.0's Blackest Black Paint. Once you go black, you never go back. I've found myself in real desire of a truly black paint. <laughs> By the way, just a disclaimer here, we are not in any way endorsing blackface. Blackface is unequivocally wrong, and you should not use black 3.0's blackest black paint for black. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait. Are you sure about that? What if it's for the, like, I, I believe it's Irish. What if it's for the Irish tradition it's of dressing silly. up of a myth as a mythological Christmas creature. Some people claim that it's a chimney sweep, but it's very obviously blackface. So, is that wrong? Blackface is still wrong, Drush. Yeah, I feel like nowadays we're more aware of right and wrong, or at least we have a more established sense of right and wrong. What is right and wrong? Well, that's a very good question. I'm, I believe it to be just what society considers, you know, right and wrong. Right and wrong is what it's defined as, you know, it's whatever people say it is. It's, 
not solid in any way except by a number of people agreeing on things that are right and wrong. Hmm. So, like, I guess that makes sense, except for the fact that if it's what society defines it as, um, so I have to think this through here, like, how exactly do you explain shifts in what's right and wrong? Because then couldn't anybody just, like, stand up and say, like, what constitutes a society? How big does something have to get? before it's right or, like, universally wrong. It has to be big enough for a large number of people to see it. I mean, like, of course, there are some, like, fundamental things that almost everybody in existence sees as wrong. Like, you know, murder being a clear example. But, yeah, to redefine morality... I don't think we ever do redefine morality. We just define how we see situations. Yeah. I mean, you look at, like, the witch burnings way back in, like, Salem. It wasn't, they, were, they weren't just intentionally burning people. Like, they a lot of times thought that they legitimately were witches. And so I don't, I think that we just change how we see situations as right and wrong. All right, uh, we're going to pause this really quick just to do a quick check to see if the audio is actually okay. And Crows will be right back. Bye! Alright, we are we are back. Uh, no time passed for you, but it passed for us, so... It was only like a minute and maybe a half. <laughs> That's still time. Alright, continue, Josh. Anyway. Josh. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, Drew. <laughs> when, when we... Uh, first, we were talking earlier about things. We were talking about morality and the issue of whether p- morality truly changed over time. Uh, I Is burning were... at the stake correct? Yes. Burning at the per- burning, burning at the pork chop is better, but stakes will suffice. But uh, also an interesting discussion is the idea of morally cheating. For example, Lance Armstrong was one of the world's most renowned cyclists until he was found to have been doping. But if Lance Armstrong had not been a very renowned cyclist and he had been found doping, would anyone care? No. I think... I know for a fact that during that era of cycling, everybody was doping. Like, (laughs) Lance Armstrong was called out because he won a bunch. So... Before we, like, talk about, like, the cheating thing, like, I think it's probably more interesting to talk about why people cared. Like, I I think maybe it's because, like, basically people built up this idealistic version of him in their head. And then when that version was faced with some sort of conflict it put up, like, some sort of defensive wall, and then people really started caring, and it messed up his career. So you're I saying think... if he had been cheating and, and he hadn't made it a secret, no one would be as mad? I mean, well, of course, if no one finds out, nobody's going to be mad. Yeah, yeah. But I think, I think people got mad because he won by cheating, and that's there's something that just feels wrong about that. People want, like... When somebody wins, people want them to be honest about their winnings. They want them to be the most skilled cyclist. They don't want to be some dude who doped. Okay, so this is the whole, like, morality thing. This is where I disagree with you. I think there is a universal morality. We define it differently, though. Like, I think the universal morality for people is that if you feel pain, it is wrong. And so, like, if something causes pain and you know that, then it's wrong. Now, like, let's take psychopaths as an example. They don't pick up on social cues of other people feeling pain. They're not able to really project that. And so, morally, there's nothing wrong about what they're doing from their stance. From their stance. Yes. But they are causing pain, and everybody has this ability to put... 
like project themselves onto other people's bodies to understand what they're going. Empathy. Yeah. Well, not all pain is bad, though. Well, yeah. I mean, like you, what pain? Well, like the pain of I don't know getting vaccinated, which, by the way, you should do. Uh, a, little, <laughs> a little plug here: vaccines, the quality product. They save lives. Yes, vaccines create old people. Okay, back, <laughs> but anyway, back to what we were talking about: vaccines. Uh, they cause a little bit of pain, but they're also not necessarily bad. Well, okay. So here's what I'm going to say to that. I think the pain you get from a vaccination, that little pinch... Is to prevent greater amounts of pain. Yeah, it's like that is your, like, morality. That's your body's response to something you shouldn't do. Like... You shouldn't be jabbing objects into your arm. We resist that, of course, because we know that we can make ourselves healthier by doing that in some yeah. circumstances. Yeah. But um, your body is telling you, if you do this, you're going to die. Yeah, yeah, because that's what pain actually is. You only feel pain because it's like your body and your brain warning you of something that you shouldn't do. True. So that makes pain inherently a bad thing and something that should be avoided. Yeah, and, like, that applies to, like, emotional pain as well. I mean, emotional pain, though you know it's coming from a different spot, is the same as physical pain. Like, it it's it feels the same, air quotes, but, yeah. Yeah, we, we're designed to feel. And, like, if we weren't supposed to feel emotional pain, then we just wouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> uh anyway um so donkey konga um so back to cheating cheating, cheating oh, doesn't okay. <laughs> <laughs> cheating does not matter unless you win i feel like you cheated there you, you stole the conversation that away was from donkey go, konga yeah Donkey Konga was going to go absolutely nowhere. I feel like Donkey Konga has already had its fill. We discussed the fact that it has Happy Birthday. We discussed the fact that it has two or four player multiplayer and the fact that it's in French. <laughs> we, we're done with Donkey Konga. Is there more to Donkey Konga, though? Like, beneath the surface? Because what we're seeing is a pretty shallow Donkey Konga. Okay, so let's combine it. Let's say cheating while playing Donkey Konga. Or playing Donkey Kong while cheating. Wait, what? <laughs> so well, like, um, so what was your whole lying cheating thing? What What was my whole lying cheating thing? Yeah, you were I, gonna say something. No, I I made the point I wanted to make. Cheating doesn't matter unless you win. Why? Unless you're successful. Because other than that, if you're so if you don't win, like I'm taking in the general idea of just playing games, it can be applied to other things, of course. But in this example, if you don't win the game, that means you were probably beat by either someone else who is cheating, in which case they'll be accused and shunned or whatever, or you were beat by somebody who wasn't cheating, which means your cheating was ineffective and therefore irrelevant. Hmm. True. So what if you're not okay i guess this is kind of dumb because if you're cheating in the first place you probably don't think it's a wrong thing well not necessarily but what if you you cheat and you feel that it's wrong i mean by like what we agreed morality was before that would still be a wrong thing because it's causing you to like feel this emotional guilt if you cheat and feel like it's wrong i think it's because you feel like this like success or a rush of victory will be worth it to feel just the pain of having to like lie to other people. Which also makes me think of another interesting thing, which is the imposter complex. Oh yeah. What's the imposter complex? So people who are like really successful, um, get this idea where they, People come to them about their achievements, and then they constantly downplay. It's kind of like being really, really, really humble. Basically, uh, let's say it's like somebody like Stephen Hawking. If he had the imposter complex, anybody that told him he was a genius with black holes, he would com 
come back and say, no, 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 I'm not. Or he would assume that other people have his level of knowledge about black holes. Like other cyborgs. Yeah. <laughs> but, but that's it. That is an example of where you're doing good, but it feels guilty. Like you're cheating or lying. So, like, what about that? Hmm. I think the, I think the reason we think cheating is wrong is because, like, I don't know, I guess if, if you cheat then and you know that you cheated, then you know that the situation could have gone differently and, like, you could have lost because of that. Or, like, you know that you're treating other people unfairly, I guess. Yeah, I think it's you're causing pain in others by taking away their success in an unfair way. But that's what I mean. That's why I think cheating is wrong regardless. Oh, yeah. I mean... But if you're not taking away anyone's success, then all you're doing is just... Well, you're just lying to people. <laughs> not getting anything out of it, though. I mean, if you don't feel like lying is wrong for you, then go ahead and cheat all you want. You're, just just don't win. win. No, just don't win. Don't Because if you, if you do win... You're not going to have any friends. Let's, let's be real. Well, what's the point of cheating then if you're not going to win? Isn't cheating specifically to win? Well, well, yeah. But, I mean, if you're caught cheating, it does come at a price. I know, but, like, you wouldn't be cheating if you didn't want to win. That's true. I'm I'm just saying. I'm not I'm not saying don't don't try to win if you cheat. I'm I'm just saying for my <laughs> sake cuz I I'm a decently honest person. For my sake, don't cheat and win. I'm going to be mad at you if you do. Not not just you, John. Josh, jo, I mean, uh but you the listener too. <laughs> this is a mess. <laughs> Uh, now we ask our listeners for any of their questions live on air. All right. Hit us. Call, call us. We're waiting. I don't think anybody's gonna call. <laughs> We're making the best podcast on the internet, people. Yeah. These are these are jokes that nobody has ever made ever. Yeah. Uh alright. So like probably wondering at this point a lot of things. <laughs> but one of them you didn't know that you were wondering is why this is called hand crows. Oh boy. There's a spicy explanation here. All right. So, um basically, the reason it's called hand crows is uh Josh and I at the beginning of the year had this discussion about something. I don't know. It was random. Yeah. <laughs> well, we we got on the topic of crows. And then we got on the topic of like comparing crows to humans. Yeah. And I think like their wings were their hands and then we just thought like what if we made the wings of a crow hands and then just turned its tail into a giant arm with a hand at the end. Yeah, yeah, so it could walk around and also had had hands and we called it a hand crow. Yeah. And that's basically it. Sam, would you like to give a thorough, or S Smamps, would you like to give <laughs> a, a thorough description of what a hand crow looks like? So, you have a crow, basically. As you know, it's a decently sizable black bird. How long is its wingspan? Uh, longer than, like, you know, your typical bird, but not like a bird of prey long. Incorrect. Their hands... Oof. No, I was talking about normal crows. I haven't I haven't gotten into the hand part yet. Oh, okay, okay. How many fingers does it have? Four or four or five or four and a thumb? Well, a normal crow doesn't really have fingers. But the hand crow, I think, has four and a thumb on each hand. So, no, so that's gonna be Well well see that's that's a common thing that people say. You know, they say that, that the thumb isn't a finger. But really, I mean it is a finger, right? It's just a different finger. That's See, true. It's just, think, it's just an opposed finger. I don't think the pinky is a finger because it's a pinky, not a finger. 
So, so Shut up. Finger. Your opinion doesn't matter. <laughs> so this middle finger isn't the finger either. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well. Yeah, they have they have five fingers. I'm going to explicitly mention the thumb just because it's opposed to the other fingers. So they can grab things, you know, like a normal hand. So there's going to be like, instead of wings, instead of wings on your normal crow, you're going to have two hands. Thumbs up or down? It depends on, you know, what the crow's feeling like. <laughs> Is a crow going to be able to paint its fingernails if it wants? It would be a complicated process. I feel like, so you mentioned the arm and hand on the tail. Yeah. I feel like in order to paint its nails, it would have to stand on that and then get the nail polish. And I don't think so. I think it could just like drop down and stand on its feet. And then, like, kind of bend its arm up over its beak and curl its fingers and then use its, like, hands to kind of eh, paint the, the fingernails like this. Dude, we're recording a podcast. Nobody can see your uh, gestures. <laughs> Just imagine that Drew did a bunch of intricate gestures there. <laughs> that Dredge did a bunch of intricate yeah. gestures. It's, yeah, it's, it's Dredge! Sorry! Sorry! I could, uh... <laughs> So yeah, that's the hand crow basically. Um it's I think it's an intricate part of <laughs> any conversation. So next time, you know, you're at the dinner table with your family, you should just bring up hand crows and tell them about how much you've learned. Also, hand crows will be utilizing CRISPR. And it will be very good for science because it'll be a valuable test. Oh, that makes me think. Have you guys, like, heard or... Well, you probably heard of it, but 23andMe. Yes. Yeah. All right, so recently, 23andMe made a new patent. And it was for one of their, like, uh, gene match things. Basically, like, two people that own accounts with them can, like... Mutually agree to send in a report, and then 23andMe will send them back what their baby will look like, what traits they will have, uh, percentage wise, based off of their genetics. And can you have two male 23andMe users find out what their baby would look like? Probably, yeah. But <laughs> does 23andMe work for animals? Uh, I don't think so, because it. Well, it depends on the animal. I mean, because it's based off of the human genome, not like another one. I mean, don't we share like... Could I find out of our what my baby lives? would look like? Maybe. Could what? I find out what my baby would look like if I fucked an orangutan? Okay, so besides the point, like, so the reason this is like a thing was because they also patent... Uh, patented the ability for people to actually send in their stuff, like their 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 genes, and get a baby in return. So people could theoret. This is like the start of like the whole designer baby thing. People could send in their genes, and like get their ideal baby. What about jean shorts? <laughs> well, you know that. Wait, what is it you know, when I you're don't... lacking a couple extra chromosomes? Like, when you're lacking chromosomes, what is that? I uh, think Down I think Down syndrome is having an extra one. Yeah, Down syndrome Down is syndrome extra. Down extra one on the 21st chromosome because I think March 21st is, like, National Down Syndrome Day. Because, oh. like, it's, like, 321. Mm. But... So, so Gene Shorts, you're asking for a genetic mutant there? I don't know. I was just making a bad pun. No, I know. Genes. I know. But I want to address this bad pun. <laughs> well, um, okay. So you see, uh, Gene Shorts are really just people that want, or just when people want sh jeans, like denim jeans, but shorter. So I'm assuming it'd just be like a baby, but a little shorter. Maybe it'd be like a boy. Because, I mean, boys have less on that last chromosome. Yeah, so fair enough. Okay. So going back to this idea of an ideal baby. With yeah. 
Yeah. With an orangutan. With my orangutan partner. Uh, I don't want to make an ideal baby. I feel like if I had the power to choose, that would be too much for me, you know? Hmm. I think I want that randomness. I want that spice that comes from, you know, making hmm. babies the old-fashioned way. But what about other people who want it? Other people who want it? Yeah. I mean, I don't see why it shouldn't be a thing that we can do. Yeah. You know, there's no reason not to do it unless something very, very wrong is discovered. <laughs> The question is, yeah, how much freedom do you allow other people? And, and that's, I think, something that's big in all of morals. If you don't want something yourself, how much freedom do you allow other people? Well, I think, like, if we're going back to the whole morality thing where it causes, like, harm. Yeah. Yeah, if so, it doesn't cause harm to me or to, you know, just anybody else in general, if it's only, like, possible to cause harm to you, I don't care if you do it. But, like, what if there's a more abstract sense of harm? I think where people get afraid of stuff like uh, genetically engineering humans or, like, selecting your partner for ideal genes. I think something like that is scary to people because it might lead into some sort of, like, weird new caste system or something. Well, because it feels like... Oh, yeah, we're like... Yeah. I mean, if you can genetically engineer people, then eventually we're just going to have people who are... You know, genetically engineered to be smart and, like, genetically engineered to be really athletic and genetically engineered. And so we're going to have – and eventually those – you know, the the money that would cost would ensure that there's a big divide financially. And so it would almost create, like, a super race of humans. But why do people, like – why do they play pay-to-win games? Like, there's lots of, like – stupid shovelware apps online that you if you pay money into the app you're guaranteed to win but people still play those like is that wrong i mean i think the two things are slightly different <laughs> well but playing an online game versus i feel like creating a human are two different things no, but this pay to win game this is this is worth going into i personally play play to win games occasionally just okay. for the rush of not paying a cent and beating people who pay money. I find that incredibly satisfying. Because it feels like... It might be just because it feels like they're cheating and I'm not. And I'm still beating them. Feels like you're getting away with something? Not that. It feels like I'm... I'm, I'm beating people who are trying to get away with something. Oh, so if I'm like stopping people person. from... Yes. I'm, I'm a hero. You know, when I play Brawl Stars, whatever. <laughs> Does Brawl Stars play to win? Pay to win? Um, I didn't think so. It can be. Okay. Because you can, you know, you can buy the gems to buy the power points to just upgrade your guys way more. Oh. Yeah. Generally, if you have an online mobile game, it's almost always going to be pay to win. Okay, yeah. Also, can we talk about those ads? Okay, so I, I get mobile app companies that you need to have ads. And on websites, I get that you need to have ads. But number one, make the X easy to find, please. If I had to click on the X and it sends me away to another site, that is irritating. Also, what is irritating is when I go to click on a website, and I'm not sure how they do this. If they have cameras around my house, if they have cameras on my phone, I don't know. But whenever I go to click, it moves. John, or Josh, Josh, have you been clicking on, like, local singles in your areas? Ads? No. no. <laughs> that sounds that's like a... What it, that's what it sounds like here. <laughs> we, should, we should do that sometime. You know, just find some local singles in our area. <laughs> okay, why... Why is that the point that we end on? I don't like, know. <laughs> I think it's because it just, like, got to a point where... We were very... (laughs) (laughs) This is the worst podcast ever recorded. That's why it's beautiful. No place to go at all. (laughs) Well, I think it's very fitting that the worst podcast ever recorded is on the worst YouTube channel ever created. You know... That is good. 
in probably, you know, I'm not going to say the worst town in Nebraska, but it's probably pretty close. Oh, there's something wrong with our town of... Town? Town, Nebraska. <laughs> <laughs> our town of Town, Nebraska is in the best... Is in, Whoa, uh, crap, don't reveal that we live in Nebraska. The sexual predators are, predators are going to come after us. Yeah, guys, you can't do that. Sorry, sorry, we don't live in Town, Nebraska, and it's definitely not located in... We live in Bangkok. County. All right, so here's what I'm going to say. Uh, the freaking town is okay. I mean, it's it's definitely, like, a safe place... But besides that, it's not much more than a safe place. Like, there's not much to do. And, like, you can... Well, there is stuff to do, but you can quickly exhaust those things. What, one thing you can do when you're done exhausting your fun possibilities is tune right in to Hand Crow's podcast. <laughs> that is a fantastic idea. And while you're at it, just give us a call right now on air. And you can also... Uh, Buy. You can consider repainting your house with uh, the the blackest black paint, black 3.0. You're gonna you're gonna <laughs> if you paint your house like that, you're gonna have neighbors that walk by and go, "Wow, that house, it's really black." Not only that, but I guarantee you won't have to pay any sort of heating bills in the winter. <laughs> <laughs> And plus, they can't make you pay house insurance either because when they walk past your house at night, they won't see a house there. <laughs> You'd be like, okay. The we're possibilities in this house. with the Black 3.0 are endless. <laughs> if I want to paint my house black, it'll be it'll it'll be like a solar panel, like a free solar panel. No, it would be like it would generate a lot of heat. It'd be pretty epic. But like. It would only apply to, like, heating. Like... <laughs> oh, so you, like you just make your house into an oven. Yeah. I feel like we need to combine black 3.0 black versus black paint with flex seal. That well, means you have a sticky black paint. Oh, oh, yeah. So it's, like, the blackest seal. Yeah. Phil Swift, get on that. <laughs> this, is, this is what the people want to see. We want to see... Flex Seal combined with Black 3.0, the blackest black paint. Yep. All right. Make so, it uh, is it time for our celebrity guest? It is time for our celebrity guest here. All right. On the show. So you guys tune in right after this, which is literally just keeping the podcast playing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. You can talk <laughs> or just say nothing. Drish is out of here. Just get get out of here. <laughs> Um. All right, so <laughs> today on our uh, our hand crowds episode, we got uh, Doctor Greg Salins. What a man! Yep. So, uh, tell tell us about yourself, your 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 career. What do you do? Why do you do it? Um, I, like, pick up after you and make you food so you don't starve. <laughs> <laughs> what a man. <laughs> that's my career, is to make money so that I can buy food so you don't starve. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, we, we had a pretty serious question planned for you. Okay. Uh, what is your favorite color? Mm, magenta. You're wrong. Okay. That's a stupid color, Greg. You feel bad. <laughs> well, not only it's, that. It's inferior to both red and purple. Yeah. But it's a mixture of the two. 
Yes, and thus... Yes, yeah. so it's a yeah. less intense version of both of them. Well, maybe it's a yeah. more intense version. No, it's definitely no. not, Greg. Because <laughs> one of them... It, like, like red is, is on one end of the visible light spectrum, and yeah, then on the purple's other. on the other. Yeah, it's it's like if you had a, a million dollars and one dollar, both of them are pretty great. Like I would take either one of those, but if you no, I take a million dollars over one dollar any day. Well, you're wrong, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so red is one dollar, and purple is a million dollars. You're set. Up, you have the choice of one one million. Or just like five hundred thousand. Who wants a wimpy number a like five hundred thousand? Five hundred thousand is stupid. Can I change my color to plaid? <laughs> plaid is not a color. It's a yes, mixture it of colors. It's well, a, no, it's a color. Well, magenta pattern. is not a color either. That's true. Wait, are colors even real? Well, because you can make the case that like any frequent, like microwaves are a color. Technically, we just can't see it. I don't think that's right at all. Well, I you mean, just <laughs> made the case that plaid was a color, so you have no room to talk. I mean, really, I'm the doctor yeah. here, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, everything's on the ultraviolet spectrum. Or, I mean, everything's on the, uh, what do you call it, electromagnetic spectrum. So, technically, like, anything. Yeah, microwaves, radios. They're yeah. The same thing, just different. See, X-ray is a color. I'm a color. You're, what color are you? Uh, Plaid. well. <laughs> wait, what? Plaid. Oh. <laughs> Heard it here first, folks. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. Uh, here's the deal, though. Like, the reason I'm a color is because I'm not necessarily sitting right here. Rather, I am most likely sitting here. I have a wave function that extends across all of existence. And since I have a wave, I am therefore just a frequency. And that's what colors are. They're just frequencies of a different kind. So that's why I'm a color. So all of us are really just colors? Yeah. So can I use you to paint? Uh, no, but you can use black, ultra black paint, three, black 3.0. It'll paint you Th just a painting... If you want to paint a picture of a, <laughs> of a coal miner in a moonless night, black, black 3.0 blackest black paint will do the job just right. Wow. Thanks, guys. That sounds great. Where could I buy this paint? Uh, Kickstarter. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, go support, go support uh, our boy on Kickstarter yep. and his quest to make the blackest paint. And we will even put a link in the description of the video for you guys. Wow. I just heard my computer quit. Yeah, you should probably leave. Can I go now? Get Please. out of here, Greg. Get out of here. <laughs> Get your magenta ass out of yeah, here. <laughs> <laughs> that was Dr. Greg Salins. Uh, yeah, and his choice of color sucks. God, I can't believe it. I just hate people that like magenta, you know? <laughs> yeah, magenta sucks. <laughs> Okay, so, uh, do we have any, like, closing thoughts or, like, anything we want to talk about before quitting today? Let's talk about fake names. Fake names? Yeah. For or against? Well, I was just going to pose a question. Do they matter? Uh, well... I would say no, considering we all picked fake names and have all ruined the fake yeah, names in this no one. one <laughs> names. I mean, I guess they mat. It depends. I mean, when you pick a tag, like a like a tag for a site or something that you want people to call you, it's it's good for like. Being anonymous, but but yeah. This has been the Hand Cross Podcast. I'm Sam. I'm Josh. And I'm uh, also Sam. <laughs> <laughs>